Gemma. Yeah, yeah, why not? Come. Yeah, yeah, he wants a picture also. That's Dima, that's the struggle for Dima. We feel that we have to go to the you know, struggle for every piece that they want to take away from us. Some people say, what is this little piece? But every area where there is a struggle is, is very important. And uh, to have you here in Dima, one who struggles, my honor, my uh, as somebody who struggles also for, for, for the land of this is Gemma. Gemma. We know, so we can be photographer. Ah, yeah. yes. Anishma, <laughs> how are you? I'm fine, yeah. I bet you'll be better in my church. No, you're going to get trans. Oh, you only trans. <laughs> so uh, Let's stay there. I want a picture. Yeah, we'll take a picture. Just uh, oh, everybody come. Uh, the army are trying to stop me. That's okay because they're worried about. Uh, they're, they claim they're worried about you. <laughs> they're worried about me. Yeah, they're worried about the bit of hon. Let's go. Now we're gonna start. Oh. Should I translate every time I... Ah, okay. Uh, I see that uh, many of you are here for the first time. So a minute or two uh, to explain to you where we are. I will read a letter that we have received, that we have received from Iran, Rishon Yumi, June 1st. Machane Shdema, the Shdema Army Camp. Machane Shdema Nimtza Al-Em Aderech Ben Yerushalayim Lerodion. The Shdema uh, Army Camp is on the road between Jerusalem and Herodian. Mikumo Sholet Al Hachoma Mitzad Echad Ve'al Bet Zachur Ve'svivotea Mitzad Sheni. Its location overlooks Hachoma on the one hand and Bet Zachur on the other hand. Hamachane Shimesh Kemachane Tzal Ad Lifnei Kama Shanim Ve'nimtza Beshetach C. This camp uh, was an army, an IDF army camp till a few years ago and is in Area C, i.e. in Israeli controlled land. ידוע לי כי על שולחנך מונחת תוכנית פלסטינית אירופאית להקמת בית חולים בשטח המחנה. We, uh, I know, says Goldstein, the mayor, that on your uh, table you have a plan, a demand by the Palestinians and the Europeans to turn this area into a hospital. מבחינה של התוכנית והיקפה ואי אפשר לקרוא לתוכנית בית חולים, one cannot call this a hospital, בתוכנית חסרים מגרשי חנייה, שטחים לפיתוח והגדלה, lots of missing, is missing. מי שעומד על גבעת שדמה, whoever stands on שדמה, רואה עשרות אלפי דונמים ריקים סביב בית סחור, sees tens of thousands of empty dunams of בית סחור area. מדוע, why, אם כן, בחרו האירופאים פלסטינים לבקש דווקא שטח זה? why did the Europeans and Arabs uh, ask דווקא to be here in שדמה? הדברים 
us. They want to take from us the little that is in our hands. Shiur shetachsin otam atumtzam meot vehem shofim leishtalet al kol mashenitan. They're trying to grab everything they can. Which one thing he doesn't put here. Davar chachu lo marpo shal goldstein etzayen. Vezem meot chashuv ladad. We have to remember that of the hundred percent of Gush Etzion, mi mea achus of Gush Etzion, tishim vachshesh achus lo beyadeno. Ninety-six percent is not in our hands. All the yishuvim, Efrat, Alon Shvut, Karmetzur, etc., are on four percent of Gush Etzion. All the rest is not in our hands. And of those four percent, which the is part of, they want to take it away from us. משפט אחרון, קציני פקמז סברו שאין בעיה ביטחונית בהקמת בית חולים במפני הצפון, אך אין לי ספק שזה לא יסתיים שם, הפלסטינים יידרשו בהמשך לקבל לידם את שאר השטח, ואז לא תהיה לנו ברירה, ורק אז הם יתנגדו, בבקשה להתנגד למסירת שטרי מחנה שדימה לידיים זרות, ולשמור שם על נוחות צבאית גבוהה. שאול גושטיין אסק את המינסטרי של הדפנס להתנגד the handing over of Jema to the Arabs and to keep it in our hands. And uh, that is what we are doing. It was never even more popular. Even my mother loved him better than me. <laughs> so I had to regain my mother. So the guy told me, run against me. I said, okay, I'm running against you. So I went for the election. <laughs> I lost. <laughs> if I had one, I would be the president. I would, have, and I would, you would have the French army helping you to get this done. <laughs> she voted. She voted for me. <laughs> I forced her. Fancy. <laughs> okay, so I ran against him. Uh, I, I wouldn't have been married with Carla because she said she's not Jewish, okay? <laughs> so I had three percent of the vote. Okay, but that's very interesting because um, uh, I started, I had this conversation, this conversation with him. So the guy here goes with his bicycle, quietly, and the guy doesn't need to be carried here, right inside the ambulance. In fact, maybe it's a taxi, you know, it's a taxi driver. <laughs> Okay, let's take a look at the third one. I have like tens of these, but I just wanted to show you the three ridiculous. Thank you. Okay, now six seconds. You'll understand later. When it comes to when we sorry. It's a man. That's why. Of course. <laughs> no, sorry. No, it's not. It's like being a woman. <laughs> no. Okay. Well. I'm, Okay, okay. Now I think we have the point, so you can turn it down now. I just wanted to make sure that you understand that it takes you like six seconds to three seconds and a half to six seconds to pick up your phone. That's it. Okay. 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 Just that you know, this man is still the, the Arab stranger working for Princeton, and he's the one who covered the last Gaza war. Okay, this is me. <laughs> With my friend Richard Lennis, we were at the court. And this is the ballistic expert. So this is a few seconds of the German, the new German documentary. It's in German with English subtitles. Philipp Kassanti bittet vor Gericht immer neue Indizien auf und Sachverständige wie den führenden ballistik experten Frankreichs, Jean-Claude Schlinger. Er vermisst die Anschlusslöcher. Kommt der Rechnung die Schusswinkel. Auch seine Beachtung kommt zum Ergebnis, die Schüsse kamen nicht aus Richtung der Israelis. Als Schussposition kommt für ihn nur der palästinensische Posten in Frage, der Wachturm Pitan. In Funktion der Position der Force, à la fois hier. Zwölf Geschosse sind in meinen Körper eingedrungen. Mein Unterkörper war voller Schüsse und mein Arm. Und Mohammed wurde zuerst am rechten Bein getroffen und das zweite Geschoss trat aus dem Rücken aus. Ich glaube, es waren insgesamt drei Schüsse. Okay, so remember, right leg, right leg. And 12 bullets for him, okay? This is me again. 12 bullets, 12 Kugeln. Das gibt Blut. Drei Kugeln, die in den Körper ein- und austreten, das gibt Blut. Auf dem T-Shirt, am Rücken oder an der Wand, das alles blutet. 
Der erste Schuss traf Mohammed angeblich ins Knie, aber nur auf dem Oberschenkel ist ein Flecken zu sehen. Warum doch? So what was the source of the LHK fire? So under oath, he said, I can confirm that the child was intentionally and in cold blood shot dead and his father injured by the idea. So let's consent to our friend. I never saw shooting in my life. What did five minutes shoot in the world? So two years later, he sent a fax to French too. And as you know, France too said, you know, they always said that I'm an agent of the Mossad. It says very publicly everywhere. So I'm not an agent of the Mossad, of course. Otherwise, I would have received the support of the, of the idea of the state of Israel. But not necessarily. Not necessarily. In a very But at least, at least I had agents working for me inside France too. I would say friends. And I got the facts that he sent, that Khalid Abu Tuhakma sent to France too. And he said, he said his signature, and then again, it has never been contested by anyone at the court. When I showed this at the court, the people of France too were like, oh, he got it. <laughs> so he said that he never said to the Palestinian human or the right organization that the Israeli soldiers killed willfully or knowingly Mohammed Dora. He denies, he retracted. Something very bad is that France too never informed his viewers of his retraction. Never, never, ever. So now, Nadia, I need you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now let's listen to Charles and Lily. It's very good thing. All the witnesses, I told you, told me the shooting was coming from the direction or from the Israeli position itself. So at the court, friends who brought documents, and they brought, uh, you know, they had witnesses who wrote documents for them. And I just took a few sentences that I understand the kind of the testimonial we got. Israeli soldiers were firing missiles. The plane was firing at them from our head. There were helicopters killed Israeli snipers firing anti-tank missiles. So we have helicopters, missiles, anti-tank missiles, plane, but still eight bullet holes and not a single drop of blood. And of course, Agence France, our friends, shots were hitting the wall, making huge holes. But I couldn't, I can't imagine that person could have survived if it stayed behind Mohammed and his father. Well, at least two cameramen survived. <laughs> So now, let's go to Jamal. Was he shot? Il y a un an, Jamal était touché par une douzaine de balles. Le roi de Jordanie a personnellement financé les sept opérations qu'il a subies. Les balles ont arraché les muscles du bras droit. Elles m'ont pulvérisé l'os. Maintenant, j'ai du métal à la place de l'os. Ma jambe droite a été criblée de balles. Ma hanche brisée, je n'ai plus de nerfs dans la jambe droite. C'est-à-dire que je suis à moitié paralysé du côté droit. So we still have the same version of the fact 12 bullets. The last picture before we cut the camera and come down after when they're dead, you can see there is no wounds nowhere. The legs, no wounds nowhere. The arm, no wounds nowhere. Even when the boy raised his elbow, you will see there, because after he died, the boy raised his elbow. He took a look at the camera and you can see there. But you can see the leg, nothing. Final, I think in your second trial, they finally, they finally did have a... The hospital, you can see a cast with blood, you know? Here. And they knew the truth? So first, uh, ask them. No, no, no. You find out so many things, so I'm asking you. Okay, well, but I'm not uh, so good at that. So first, ask them. It's very important to ask them why they didn't ever do their job. Second, they never really helped. I got a letter from the IDF just before the appellate trial, which was a little supportive, but not completely supportive. And if you want to hear a story, Charles and Berlin, uh, uh, something that you understand how powerful he is in your state and how vicious it is. I was working with the IDF in order to get, um, in order to get the letter you know, that they sent me. So we worked in a very precise word in French, and then it was sent to someone who was a guy 
very well educated in France and Israel, and he had to make the translation. So when he finished his translation, you know, everybody knows in Israel where is the French to, I mean, in the, I would say, the intellectual community, the journalists, everybody knows where they're building, you know, it's all the TV. So he called his friend Charles and said, hello Charles, I have to send you a letter, which is very uh, bad for you. Could you give me your address? Oh yes, my address is up. What happened? The IDF didn't send the letter for two more months. Why? Because Angelin went to his friend at the IDF and prevented the letter to be sent. So I had to use some of our common friends who went to the American, to the Israeli ambassador to America, who called them and said, what's going on in your country? Please help have this letter sent. You understand? So I don't know. I know that he's very well connected. I know that you have people who have interest in this. You know, at the beginning, uh, Barack was prime minister. Yeah, he thought he had a pattern.